Welcome back to the channel, I hope everybody's doing well. We're back again with another video this month, looking into three UK stocks which could be good long term buys in September 2021. If you enjoy these types of videos, please drop it a like, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. Any support or feedback would be hugely appreciated. When I'm doing these types of videos, I like to try and find stocks which are totally unrelated and can each offer something different. So for this month we have a Covid recovery play, a speculative growth stock and the last one is a dividend growth company. The first stock which we'll go over here is Stagecoach, which if we look at the 5 year share chart, has been on a downward trend for a long time now, but it looks to have completed a solid bottom in 2020 and it looks to be looking for the next direction. From a valuation perspective, they're very cheap with a trailing PE of 12 and the price to sales at only 0 0.43. Low market cap company at under 400 million. So who are Stagecoach and what do they do? Well, as you can imagine by the name, they're a UK based transport company. They're divided into four segments, which are UK bus regional operations, Megabus Europe, UK bus London and UK Rail. The regional operations connect communities in over 100 towns and cities across the UK on bus networks stretching from the highlands of Scotland to the south west of England. Megabus Europe offer intercity coach services with mainland Europe and between the UK and mainland Europe. UK Bus London operates 10 depots and has a fleet of over 1300 buses around East and South East London. The UK Rail segment provides rail and operations and the UK providing intercity services between London, Edinburgh, Newcastle, Leeds and York with 24,237 employees on the books. So this is a company that has a really easy to understand business model, been beaten down due to COVID lockdowns and no one travelling anywhere near as much as they have done previously. So let's take a look to see how they're performing as a business. The financials have been on the same downward trend as the share price, but you'll notice that even during these times, they still generate a small profit, which we'll get onto shortly. Revenue is expected to make a gradual comeback, with year-over-year -year growth expected out to 2024, with net income and operating margins expected to improve. Balance sheet is in OK shape, with leverage below two times, with net debt reducing to similar levels found pre-COVID. Now on to their latest financial results. Cash and profit were positive in 2020-21. They reduced net debt by 10%, Good progress in delivering immediate priorities which are reshaping the bus networks to reflect new lifestyles, recovering regional bus commercial sales and new contract wins and growth within London. The growth prospects for Stagecoach is that the recovery is in full flight for commercial bus sales which are now at 68% of pre-Covid levels. So they've still got a bit of room to go. Extensive opportunities from the National Bus Strategy for England and a three, with 3 billion funding and the Scottish Government are targeting 20% reduction and car usage by 2030 with a £500 million investment to improve the bus infrastructure with ambitious long-term sustainability strategy and strong ESG performance. Year-over-year -year results show the massive decline in operating profit which has come down £71.6 million. But what I've got highlighted here is that the government is in very close partnership with Stagecoach and have provided payments which keep them in the green. Showing their support to this company as a, a bit of a safety blanket as with government contracts and support, it can add cash injections and provide funding for future investments. Their main source of revenue comes from their regional bus service, which shows improving metrics with continuous trends looking more positive. As we said, commercial usage was 68% back to where it was pre-COVID, and we can see that when we come out of lockdown periods, bus usage usually returns quite quickly, showing that the demand is there for these services. Hopefully this can progress over the coming months, with social distancing being removed, allowing buses to carry more people. With a huge focus on emissions, Stagecoach are targeting to become a zero emissions bus fleet by 2035 and have invested over 1 billion in new greener vehicles within the past 10 years. They have 147 zero emission buses in the UK, which only reflects about 1% of the total fleet, so plenty of investment needed here to bring that number up. One of the areas which showed resilience through the pandemic is the London Bus Division, which actually improved year over year due to their contracts with Transport London, with contract price inflation, further net contract wins and extensions, alongside no loss of existing routes. Summer and outlook for Stagecoach is to, is to keep debt levels protected, bus and tram services are returning, government support will help during the COVID recovery period and will bring back cash dividends when appropriate. Some of the growth opportunities that they mention are the road to net zero with the support from the National Bus Strategy in England and policies in Scotland and Wales. Focus on the environment, pushing for more bus usage around the cities as opposed to using cars and bringing in the correct software and tools, making usage for public transport easy and efficient for end users. Price targets from tip ranks have quite a bullish rating on the stock with an average price target from four analysts at £1.12 giving a huge return of 54% 
increase from current levels. So this looks as if it, if it can carry out these returns, this could be a really good turnaround play based on the COVID recovery in place. Stock number two is a really interesting company and it's more of a spec play. The company is Bushfeld Minerals, who are a small cap company with a market cap of about £140 million. And as can be seen by the five year share price chart, it's been on a pretty volatile journey. They don't have a PE ratio due to negative earnings, but the price to sales is a very fairly valued 1.56. Disclaimer, this technically isn't a UK company, but they are listed on the UK market and I think it could offer something really unique. They are a South Africa based integrated vanadium producer and operate in four segments. Vanadium mining and production, energy, mineral exploration for vanadium and coal exploration. Bushfield Energy is focused on developing vanadium energy storage market through vanadium based energy storage systems called vanadium redox flow batteries. The company's product portfolio serves in the steel, energy and chemical sectors. Revenue peaked back in 2018 with £150 million in revenue, but they still had a really successful 2019 with net income more than doubling. 2020 was a rough year, as it was for most companies, but revenue is expected to return in a V-shape like recovery out to 2022, with revenue expected to return to 2018 levels. The company's balance sheet is in good shape, with expectations that debt will be getting paid down out to 2022, as EBITDA also improves. Vanadium Redox flow batteries are well positioned to take significant share of the stationary energy storage market with unique advantages for long duration stationary energy storage applications. Some of the advantages are long, long lifespans, 100% depth of dis discharge, low cost, safety, sustainability, noting that they have a 30% lower carbon footprint than lithium ion batteries which are hugely popular, flexibility and no cross contamination. With the move to green and cleaner energy and energy storage becoming more popular, the use of vanadium can benefit from these trends. The third paragraph down says that the energy storage installations will grow 122 fold from 2018 out to 2040, which is absolutely crazy, but definitely believable. You can see that with the chart on the right hand side, the forecast on how electricity will be generated with solar and onshore wind expected to be the biggest drivers out to 2050. It's a greener commodity for the future and can be used within the aerospace sector due to its strength and ability to operate at high temperatures, which is essential in aero engine gas turbines and airframes. Vanadium has also been used in new titanium alloys, which will contain between 8-15% vanadium, and the VRFBs look like a real growth driver as they mention how important this will become in the grid energy storage space going forward. Bushfeld aimed to be the leading vanadium platform. They own two out of four world operating primary vanadium facilities and aim to become a key player in the energy storage space with the VRFBs. Production growth has been focused on in the short term and long term plans. In 2020, they had $50 million in cash with net debt of $33.7 million. Production went up 24%, sales went up 61%, but the cost of vanadium reduced in this time period and ended up resulting in negative EBITDA. 2021 guidance and outlook is that they aim to strengthen the balance sheet and increase cash flow margin expansion and debt reduction, implement cost savings between two and a half and four million dollars per year from 2022, increase production, improve operational stability in the second half of the year, and the price of vanadium right now is sitting about forty dollars per kilogram, up from twenty three point four dollars last year. Cash equivalents in 2021 is to be around $31 million with capital expenditure of $26.8 million and as we said they have the cost saving plan in place. At the moment Bushveld have two different mining entities within Vimetco and Vantium due to the purchase of Vantium in 2018 for $53 million. So this makes sense that they need to align these two operations more closely together to get the most capital efficiency out of production. And should they be able to do this, this should pay dividends going forward. Production output it looks strong in the near, medium and long term projections. So what are the growth drivers for Bushfeld? Well firstly, the price of vanadium has recovered which is good. The demand for the steel market is to be stable at a combined annual growth rate of 2% out to 2030. But the big one here, which, is circled, which I've got circled here, is going back to their batteries, the VRFBs, which is expected to grow at an amazing combined annual growth rate of 56% out to 2030. Price targets are taken from Yahoo Finance and Market Screener and they have it as between 25 pence and 32 pence and at current levels both would give a huge 100% return so yeah really interesting small cap company here with a really promising future and the last stock we've got for this month is a large cap value stock which is Unilever massive company with a market cap of 105 billion and currently offers a very respectable dividend yield of about 3.68% appealing to more income focused investors 
The PE is quite high at just under 23, but in comparison to where the share price has been trading, looking at the five year chart, it's right around the £40 mark, where it's only been below that level on a few occasions. Unilever are a fast moving consumer goods company offering a huge variety of products from skin and hair care, deodorants, snacks, sauces, soaps, and all kind of cleaning products. They have some of the most well known brands under their name, like Dove, Hellman's, and Surf. They operate in over 100 countries and offer products in more than 190. With a consumer goods company of this size, you won't be getting eye-watering growth, but more consistency. This information is all in euros. Revenue for the last few years has been fairly flat at around 50 to 51 billion. EBITDA and EPS has been fairly consistent as well, with a growing dividend payment. Forecasts out to 2023 expect top-line growth of mid-single digits, alongside EBITDA and net income to improve also. The dividend payment is also expected to follow this trend with small gradual increases. Net debt has remained fairly flat and is expected to remain flat out to 2023 at around 20 to 22 billion, but still under two times leverage to EBITDA, so still very manageable. Sales growth is up 5.4% alongside volume growth of 4%. Underlying operating margin is 18.8%, which is down 100 base points from the first half of the year. Earning per share is down 2%, with three cash flow of about 2.4 million. The lower margins and the lower earnings per share here is what's likely behind the struggling share price. The company has five strategic choices which they're following. Develop their portfolio into growth spaces. Win with their brands as a force for good, powered by purpose and innovation. Accelerate in the USA, India, China, and leverage emerging market strength. Lead in channels of the future and build a purpose-led future fit organisation and growth culture. So all this sounds great, but what does it translate to in the real world? When you have a company the size of Unilever, their future growth drivers are identifying small companies with successful products which they can acquire and develop further. They've recently acquired Paula's Choice, a digital-led cruelty-free skincare brand, and have exposure to high growth areas within their business, within their prestige and functional nutrition segments. Share buybacks are back on the cards, with up to €3 billion Euros underway. Unilever offer a hugely diverse product portfolio separated into seven divisions in home, prestige, functional health, laundry, personal care and out of home. You can see how effective having this diverse portfolio is when you've got lockdowns, when the lockdowns were in place, home and hygiene were performing well and now that people are back out and about and on the move again, prestige, personal care and out of home have performed very well. E-commerce has shown amazing strength and amazing growth, especially in India, with over 100% increase in usage. China with 34% and the USA with 16%. If there's one thing that we know is that e-commerce is here to stay and this trend will be here for a long time to come and it's going to be growing rapidly. So it's good to see that this company is focusing on this and it's an avenue that they're exploring as a good growth opportunity. Turnover for the year is flat year over year, so nothing to shout about here. Underlying operating margins has come down a bit, as we've said, from 19.8% to 18.8%, and this will likely be because of the inflationary pressure on materials and supply constraints. Although product sales are increasing are fairly flat, the margins are decreasing due to increased costs, and with these sort of headwinds in place, it could be a good buying opportunity and why the share price has been struggling. Earnings per share also took a hit to the downside, slightly reflecting the same pressures. They've said they've had a strong first half performance, but to be honest, I would say it's more a consistent performance as everything's in line as it was a year ago, if not slightly worse. They've made progress on the portfolio evolution and they've got pricing stepping up and cost inflation accelerating in the second half of the year. The outlook for the rest of the year is they're still confident to be within their 3-5% to framework. Tip ranks are giving us a price target of £43, which is up about 7% from current levels, so for me, this is a stock with a few short to medium term headwinds around inflation costs. However, with a diverse product portfolio, they can perform in any market conditions as shown previously, and they're still a resilient company with a lot to offer, especially a close to 3.7% dividend yield. So definitely one for the more income focused investors to pay attention to. So guys, that'll sum up this month's video for September. With these three stocks, let me know your thoughts on these in the comments below and I'll catch up with you in the next video.